Welcome back everybody on today I'm testing out the Pogo Cam. This is a small camera that attaches to your sunglasses. It came out a few years back. Originally it was 100, 150 bucks. Now it's 90% cheaper, but is that a good deal? Let's find out in today's video. I should say it's not for just sunglasses. It can be for glasses as well, but I'm testing them on sunglasses. But let's go back to the unboxing and see how that went. All right, here we go. The Pogo Cam wearable camera attaches magnetically to your glasses. The packaging looks pretty nice. I'll give them that. Okay, oh, it's very small. Very small. Got some instructions here. Here's a chart with the sounds. That's kind of nice. I can say it's very small. So we've got a couple of lights on here, a couple of buttons, not much. I'm assuming that's a magnet that can attach to, attach to a magnetic frame. Alright, what is that? Oh, I think these, this is going to be the, the loop that, that will attach it to your actual glasses. On the Amazon comments, they said, do not, do not lose these. If you lose them, you're going to lose your Pogo Cam. So I need to figure out which one I'm going to actually need. And then I guess this is the docking station right here. All right there, that looks like the t docking station charger. What's in here? This is just our, just our cable and a cloth to wrap things up. So the claims on this are that you can use it with your own glasses. It has 720p HD video, 30 second clips at a time. Battery will stay idle for about 20 days. They can hold over hundred photos or six 30 second video clips. Six? <laughs> it's not very much. Now, I think I paid about 15 bucks for this, but I think originally it was something like 100 to 150 bucks. It's really come down a lot in price, which kind of tells you something. The promotional video shows these couples and these really high quality images at a beach. But then you get on Amazon, there's nothing but complaints about pretty much every feature. Everything from being grainy, not good in low light, low quality images, not easy to transfer. Uh, there's there's a, la a laundry list of things. One guy even said that it ruined his marriage proposal. I'm not going to let that influence me. Maybe I'll like it. So I'm going to sit down with this and get it to work and I'll show you how it goes. All right, so I bought the Pogo Cam quite a few months ago and I unboxed it about a month ago and I've been trying to use it ever since then and notice I used the word trying. But before I get too much further, let's take a closer look at how it works. All right, first of all, I have to actually carry it around in a Ziploc bag because there's so many small parts. I'm always afraid I'm going to lose them and I'll get into that a little bit later. This is kind of uh, how it looks when it's in use. I've got this safety loop on it right here. Uh, now the way it's supposed to work is you're supposed to take one of these, which are called pogo loops and as you can see they have a little tiny loop on each side and those are supposed to go over each arm of your glasses like that. Once the pogo loop is installed then you actually attach the pogo cam to the pogo loop like this. And then you have the safety loop which also attaches to your arm of your glasses. So you can already tell there's a lot of parts. You've got the safety loop that can fall off, you've got the pogo loop that can fall off, then you've got the, the docking station right here. Now when the camera gets full you can attach it to there. It can download the images to that. That's also how you get them onto your computer. And one thing I noticed about this is it has an on off switch. It does not have an auto shut off. It just stays on until you turn it off. Let me try installing this pogo loop onto these glasses. So now what you're supposed to do, they have these little tiny loops right here and these loops are supposed to go over the one of the arms of your glasses. So eventually it, it should look like this. So there's a little little handle right there you're supposed to grab onto and stretch it out. It's not easy whatsoever. Okay, I've got, I've got one on there. Now let's try for the second one. All right, I did it. I did it. I did it. I did it. Okay, that's what we've got. Now what you can do is attach the pogo cam to your glasses. This is a magnetic strip that fits in there to there. Just like that. Now what you're also supposed to do is loop the safety loop over the end of your glasses so it won't fall off. And there we have it. And that's what we've got. We finally got the camera on the side of the glasses. Something else I want to point out is even though it might look straight, just a little bit of an angle will make it look really crooked in the final result. To turn it on, there are two buttons on here. There's a front button right here and a rear button back there. So to turn it on, you hold down the rear button until you hear it beep. And then you have to wait six seconds before the camera is actually on. Okay, after the two beeps, then it's ready to record. I didn't realize it at first. It didn't really, the instructions were clear about that. So when I first started using it, I would hear the first beep and I would start trying to record. It wasn't recording. I didn't know what was going on. You got to wait for the second beep before it's actually ready to record. 
And then once the second beep happens, you've got 90 seconds and then it'll shut back off. You gotta start the whole process over again. And once you've got it on your glasses, it's pretty easy to take on and off except for the fact that you've got that safety loop on there. Their commercials keep showing people taking it on and off their glasses really easily, but unless you want to lose them, you have to have the safety loop which defeats that purpose. Before I show myself using the camera, let's take a look at back some footage I shot on the camp, Pogo Cam a few weeks ago. Now in this first clip I was in Hawaii, I was kind of panning around just to kind of get a first use of it to show my hands where I was hands free. Now if you look at it right here, I'm pausing the action, you can see that it's certainly crooked, and that's because the camera was just a little bit angled on the glasses. I couldn't even really tell. Uh, because it's so small, a little bit of an angle makes a big difference. You'll also notice that the quality of the video isn't very good. It looks almost like some video camera you bought from Kmart in 1990. It's about that level. It's not, they say it's HD, it's not very good. Another thing to point out is when you look at the sky, there's a lot of banding in there. It's just a low quality image. There is audio on the camera. I did an audio test. Here's how that sounded. All right, how does this look? I'm a Waikiki Beach, just doing a slow pan here. Does it sound okay? I'm not sure how it sounds. I haven't tested the audio yet. From my perspective, it looks nice, but how's this camera look? Is it crooked? Does the color look good? I don't know. Maybe shockingly, the video and the audio quality is not the worst feature of this camera. As bad as the audio and video are, the rest of the features of the camera are even worse. Uh, probably the worst thing is it can only hold six 30 second videos. There really isn't much of an indicator to let you know that it's full. It only stays on for 90 seconds at a time before it turns back off. It's also hard to put on your glasses evenly without everything being crooked. But let me show you the process of using the Pogo Cam so you can see how it works. First up, I'm going to turn it on, pressing the back button for a few seconds. All right, wait, wait until the second beep. Okay, now it is ready to record. I'm going to press it one more time. I'm gonna switch over to what the camera shows right now. All right, here we go. I'm in the very back corner of my yard. That's, that's why I film back here sometimes. But this is what I'm seeing. You're seeing what I'm seeing. Oh, it's kind of bright. How's that palm tree look? I'm gonna keep talking until this video ends. But this is a nice palm tree, isn't it? So obviously I haven't seen that yet because I just recorded it, but I'm assuming it looks and sounds as bad as everything else I've done with this Pogo Cam. A couple of other notes. First of all, I think the original list price was 130. I've seen people around online talking about it being from 100 to 150 back when it came out. I bought it for 15, but it's already down to about 12 bucks. It's, the price is still dropping and people still don't want it. I also wanted to mention that one of the Pogo loops broke when I was in Hawaii and it didn't break when I was using it. It broke while I was walking down the street. All of a sudden the Pogo cam started dangling. I had a look at it. One of the loops was broken. Let's take a look at some of the pros and cons of the Pogo cam. Not a lot of pros to really mention. I guess the one pro is that it does work. It does record audio and video, so I've got to give it credit for that. But my list of cons is kind of long here. I have to have a list of them. I wrote them down because I didn't want to forget any of the key features of my cons of the Pogo Cam. Besides the obvious bad video and audio quality, the fact that it has so many small parts, that's definitely a con. The installation is awkward. The capacity is minuscule. It's just clunky to use. And honestly, I don't even think most people even want something like this. When the Ray-Ban Stories came out last year, which I reviewed, a lot of people didn't even want the camera on those and they're a lot nicer and they can stay on for hours. This one only stays on 90 seconds. Just because you can put a camera on your glasses doesn't mean people want you to. And I think the fact that the price of this is 90% less than it originally came out, the fact that Ray-Ban stories have not been a huge success, tells me that people don't really want a camera on their glasses. At least not yet, maybe one day, but right now, not yet. A lot of times I've pressed the button thinking I'm recording and actually I wasn't. And also during Hawaii and Huntington Beach, I was having photos being randomly taken I didn't mean to take. It's just, it's just very clunky to use and a lot of times you find yourself hitting the button mistakenly. It's just, it's just not great. Well, that's it. As far as I'm concerned, the Pogo Cam is not a great product. Uh, no surprise there. But if you've used it, tell me what you think in the comments below. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.